General Kale Kaihura was the longest serving Inspector General of Police under the NRM regime that his projected power was felt in every pocket of the security fabric. Whereas the president often handed the role of security and intelligence to various centers of power, including the Internal Security Organization and the Chieftains of Military Intelligence, Kaihura fused these roles as he supervised the country's security. What endeared him further to the presidency was dovetailing security and political cadership as he edged out his colleagues in the battle of supremacy. With a Stalinist streak, he often took a radical position when dealing with the regime's political opponents. The president hailed him as a loyal cadre as he was promoted to the rank of general, a preserve of nine military officers, most of whom participated in the Luero Bush War. So how did Kaihura move from the role of regime troubleshooter and suddenly become a suspect in high-profile murders, including that of his protege, former AIGP Andrew Felix Kawesi? Why would he be questioned over espionage links with a neighboring state? Yet those familiar with the cloak and dagger games, this came as no surprise. In November 2005, Kaihura was appointed as IGP, replacing General Edward Katumba Amala. Wamala had been appointed at the end of the Justice Julia Sebutinde Commission of Inquiry in 2001, which was meant to read the force of graft, apathy, and rogue officers. However, Kaihura, who often executed the president's assignments with zeal, was the preferred choice of the role at the time the police began to gradually turn into a quasi-military outfit. Critics did not attribute the appointment to Kaihura's bootstraps, but largely to his role as the enforcer to break the opposition doing Kiza Besige's capture of urban centers. Above all, I'll be forever indebted to H.E. the president and the commander in chief for his trust and confidence, and particularly to have entrusted me with such a responsibility, during which time he, pro he promoted me to Major General, then Lieutenant General, now to Full General. <coughs> this is not a small achievement, my friends. So, uh, sir, through you, uh, I want to thank the President. Uh, I want to, to, to express, I'm, 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 as you know, I'm a loyal soldier of UPDF. I'm a loyal cadre in the struggle to transform our country. That's what I will remain. Yes, it, it's, I, I blame Kaihura for not refusing. But if he, for whatever reasons, accepts to go and do those things, I will not celebrate because he's not there and somebody else is there. Because even that one who is there is still a tool. He can put the tool aside and get another tool and continue to do the same thing. If you are cutting a tree with a, a chainsaw and the chainsaw becomes blunt, you can put it aside, get another chainsaw. The tree will not celebrate that the chainsaw that was causing it pain has gone. Finally, the issue of personalizing the institution. Why, why have you personalized the institution? That for every single thing that must happen under police must be sanctioned by you, where you were, whether you were in a meeting, whether you are uh, abroad, someone must inform you in Utamba that members of parliament are conducting a public hearing, sir, can I allow them to go ahead? Now, therefore, I want to salute General Kaleke Ihura because he actively Because, he, because normally this was done by the UPDF and Kale Kehura was, was doing it with the UPDF when he was CPC, uh, political commissar of the army. But when he came to the police, he brought the same idea. As a canny operator, he was able to check the urban protest threat and end what some feared would be Uganda's own version of the Arab Spring. No wonder, unlike 20, 2011, 
2011 elections, uh, we did not have something similar to walk to work. Right from the 12th, the 18th of Feb to date, uh, we, have, they, 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 we, we, we defeated. It's not that they did not plan, they plan. They plan to disrupt, disrupt to cause post election violence. As Kaihura's clout and influence grew, he laid out his security blueprint. He tore the conventional playbook of recruitment and hired officers at his own whims and fancies to execute his key assignments, sidestepping senior police officers. Yet he found them competent to execute his assignments. So, once you remove these two, because if you remove blast, then tear gas, uh, rubber bullets, obviously bullets, are, are eliminated. So the only, the, only, the only options that we have given these commanders are two. Nani, battle the charge. Mm. Mm. Well, at least even if I hit you, you will not die. Then, uh, but of course also hitting at a place which will not cause harm. Then, Nani, uh, water, water cannon. Those are the two we have, we have for. Because those ones, even they don't, they don't, uh, like for example, you know, tear gas even affects people who are not involved. It was, and it was creating a big problem, and some people had decided now to use it for propaganda, uh, insulting me that, that, that I found the tear gas. You know, they were using it as a propaganda. Crime continued to creep into the police force as some of the senior officers deliberately took part or were complicit in crime. Why to say that? However, his veritable voice gave hope to the grassroots support of the ruling party as he established crime preventers and NRM CADA affiliate meant to support police fight crime and prop up support for the regime. And she came across some of the elders who wanted to rape her. The fate of the crime preventers to be decided by the new IGP. Then I rang the, when I read it, I rang the new IGP. He said, please, this is not your problem. When I talk about protecting the president, I mean that a crime preventer can give his life for the president, his excellence. We are in a position to, give, to protect our president. We are ready to, we, I don't want to be misquoted by the media, but we can kill for the president. Despite flag from other quarters, the president chose to reward Kaihura. On March 14, 2018, the president wrote to the Speaker of Parliament, nominating him to serve another term as IGP till 2020. However, I am very happy what the police is doing. You are helping us to mobilize the people. Yeah. Actually, as opposition, we are now becoming almost irrelevant. So please, Kaiora, I want to thank you. <laughs> Continue with what you are doing. You have made me as a Catholic, even my Archbishop, to say you are like a me. There is no better kind of mobilization we can have. The Kipopo squads are everywhere in the street. I want to thank you for superintending them. Yesterday I was in a Savona, they used to say next time they will put on four trousers since they are now Kipokos. So people are getting more resolved. The degree of bitterness on this government is increasing. Thank you. 
So you are just really helping us. Please continue <laughs> supervising. And you, in fact, we should even appoint you the police, the top brass, mobilizers of the opposition party. <laughs> when we see a head of a family being carried like a dead pig, when we see someone moving with a court order like this, as an advocate, you have even mobilized the courts again as yourself. The judgment which came the next day, the court was either to assert himself or leave it to the police. But I want to tell you, I'm just 36 years, that this thing will not end like this. It can't, because it is so bad, it can't end like this. There is no way that it will end like this. Now the big question I want to ask the Inspector General of Police in good faith, to what occasion or to what day, in a civil society, in a civilized community, do people resign? Because if all these things are done on your own watch, and you are the Inspector General of Police, isn't it high time, as a decent man, as a senior lawyer, as a trained high officer, to gender in your resignation? Because you failed. Easy. Uh, hooligans going on top of the building, and then they hit a young with a stone. Nobody talks about it. I never had a single Margaret Sekaja who comes out so quickly saying anything about this. I think this is double standard. This is hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. And we cannot accept it. To be punching bugs when we are doing our, our duty of protecting this country. Some of police becomes a punching bug. No. This came at the time crime was spiraling out of control as a spate of high-profile murders remained unresolved. But the higher he ascended the greasy pole and eclipsed records, it became apparent that the position Kaihura had inherited was a poison chalice. There were mistakes that were beginning to be glaring. Inefficiency, incompetence, and eventually two years ago, when the president publicly chided the police, as having been infiltrated by criminals and directed Jino Kaihua to clean it up. I think after two years, the president's assessment is that he has failed to clean up the police force to his expectation. With a docket of intelligence gathering returning to their traditional roles under the Internal Security Organization and the Chieftains of Military Intelligence, Kaihua's star began to diminish. The president now relied more on the CMI boss Abel Kandiho, Kaka Bajend of ISO, and another consummate military political strategist, then Security Minister, Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde. In February, the President called a meeting at State House Nakasero, attended by other security chiefs, which sealed the fate of the former IGP. And with a dossier, the President was angry that the state security apparatus had been penetrated by foreign agents and some police officers were vital cogs of this infiltration. Has played in that, I am really not sure, but quite obviously there have been accusations of uh, uh, General Kaihura seemingly either supporting Rwanda or not vigorously doing something about them that have led to the latest tensions between the, between the two. Because don't, don't, don't suppose that it is the failures in the police that caused the, this change. I don't think so. Kenyura was reappointed less than a year ago. You remember? He's just been reappointed and went through parliament and parliament reapproved him. So if they reappointed him only last year, you mean Mr. Museven didn't know of the problems in the police? Kaihura was no longer indispensable, and in March 2018, he was fired. One time you were in government, even if you're not in uniform, you may be a minister, you may be whatever you are, but you need to know that at some point you won't be in that position. And therefore, when you are out there, you are exposed. If there's no law to protect you, what You're happens? Trouble. I mean, this should be just logic. <laughs> and my hope is that all of us who are outside government, those who are in government, that invest all our efforts and energies 
and focus on ensuring that we have a country where we are all equal before the law. Because once all of us operate from that mindset, whether it's a president, whether it's a minister, whether it's a commander of an army or police, mm -hmm. then that becomes a firm foundation in the base of which a country can have sustainable stability. Yeah. By the time a meeting was held at State House in Tebe this Monday, it was likely for the president to seek consensus with his security chiefs on how to carry out a carefully calibrated arrest of Kaihura to fit public expectation. Kaihura has now changed places. He's no longer presiding over the arrest of the president's implacable adversaries. He must confront a new challenge to free himself from the shackles of bondage. Emmanuel Mutaizewa, NTV.